so a process block is a way of describing complex functionality in a manner like c or python okay using a set of sequential statements so far when using signal assignments or writing structural descriptions the designer has to have a clear idea of what the hardware looks like right and that is why we introduced these other constructs first in this lab so that you are encouraged to think about what the hardware looks like you are encouraged to think about what are the things how are they connected together okay what are the input outputs what are the uh, you know what are what are the interfaces you are, you are encouraged to think of all these things like right? um, what are the actual combinational circuits that implement that hardware but if you have let's say if you have some combinational circuit some function which is doing something little more complicated okay it's a bit complex let's say it's multiplying two unsigned integers it's more convenient to write it in a manner similar to c or python you write it like first do this then do this then do this let's say for example it's a multiplication then we might say take the first number add it to, uh, add it to itself again add it to itself or so something like this in a loop right we may find it simpler to write them in this manner so the purpose of a process block is like this you are describing some hardware with some inputs and some some things that it affects so it it there are some things which act like inputs some things which act like outputs okay and this does something complex you can describe it in a manner like c or python okay what do you do you just describe what it should do and you don't worry about what is the hardware how is it implemented or so on so it's kind of like a high level description okay you describe what it does or its behavior using some sequential statements okay think of it like writing a function in c you can just like in c you can have local variables for loops if else then constructs etc okay so notice that the process describes behavior instead of a structure so it will just the description will just tell you okay what is this process triggered on what are the input things what what are the things that it affects or updates and what does it do what is its behavior how are the output values or how 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 are these affected signals dependent on the input signals we just describe the behavior without describing how it's implemented how would it be implemented in hardware that's not described by this high level description we are just focusing on what it does so we are describing the behavior instead of structure so typically vhdl code which is written using these process blocks is called a behavioral style description instead of a structural style description okay so let's uh, enough of meta discussion let's see an example so the general format of a process now you might have seen uh the similar format used for a lot of other blocks right so you have a label which is the name of this process block you can give some label label then process keyword then a list called sensitivity list which is a list of signals that act like inputs they i won't call them inputs it's called a sensitivity list we'll see what that is then you have a declaration block before the begin just like in in architecture block and then between begin and end you have sequential statements okay so this is the format for a process let's see an example let's see this example of an xor gate okay so this is the architecture as usual and begin oh i'm sorry there is a typo there is a there are some signal declarations missing here so signals a b y z1 etc are declared here okay assume that these signals are declared here now we begin the architecture 
then this is our process process block this this whole thing is a process block so there is a name xor process the keyword and sensitivity list has signals a and b that means a and b kind of this process is sensitive to signals a and b begin and end process so what is within begin and end so if a is not equal to b this is a symbol for not equal to okay if a is not equal to b then y should be assigned a 1 so clearly y is something like output of this process right else y should be assigned a 0 so a b y z all of them are uh, of type standard logic single bit standard logic okay end if end process okay so it might seem similar to the other if then constructs we have seen within the generate block for example but in a process you interpret them by reading it from top to bottom okay you read the statements in order just like you would read a c code or a python code read them one after the other okay so what does this process do this process is sensitive to the signals a and b that means whenever there is any change on this signal a or the signal b any of these signals then this process becomes triggered when it is triggered is just like calling a function in c when it is triggered whatever is described inside will be executed so whatever what is inside if a is not equal to b then y is assigned a 1 else y is assigned a 0 are you convinced that this implements an xor gate yes uh, so output is 1 only when a and b are different 0 1 or 1 0 else the output is 0 if they are equal right so that's a that's a xor gate assuming a and b can only take the value 0 and 1 right so this is a example of a process block now notice that this entire process block if you think of it as a single statement okay it's a some statement and then there's a semicolon the entire block itself acts like one statement so this is statement one semicolon this particular thing is statement two semicolon this is statement three semicolon so statement one statement two statement three are all concurrent statements with respect to each other okay that means the statement one this one okay this is our xor block some a and b and then there is some hardware and then it's affecting y then here is a and b so the same a and b there is a nand gate and it is affecting z1 and there is there's a or gate here a or b and it is affecting z2 as per this code so this one this one and this one are all existing at the same time they are all concurrent so process block itself is a concurrent statement it's concurrent with respect to the other statements which are there outside but the statements inside the process block are to be read sequentially okay all right So sensitivity list is a list of signals that the process is sensitive to. It's a list of signals that the process is sensitive to. That means if any of the signals in that list changes, then the process should be updated or it should be executed or run once and whatever is its output should be updated. So in that example of the XOR gate, there was a and b as its sensitivity list in its sensitivity list so that means when and there is an output y now what happens is when the simulation starts right at the beginning it's as if every signal changes right at the beginning when you know at time zero it's assumed that all the signals are changing so this process block executes at least once right it will execute what will it do it will calculate a XOR of A and B. That is check if A and B are, let's say initially, these are initialized to zero. So it will check and they are 
the same so y, y will be 1 so a b and then y at time 0 this will be 0 and y will be 0 and then nothing no change let's say after a while this a it goes from 0 to 1 so a has gone from 0 to 1 b is still the same because there is a change now in a this process will become triggered or activated when it is activated whatever is inside those sequential statements will be executed immediately one by one but immediately okay to calculate or to compute the new value of y that should be updated so now it checks whether a and b are equal well they are not equal so y should be 1 so y is 1 and it is updated immediately okay now if there is no change in a and b this will stay passive it will get triggered again after there is any change or on a or on b okay so this is the purpose of a sensitivity list now you might ask why do we wh what happens if we miss out on writing something in the sensitivity list hmm? so suppose inside we have a process right and in that process actually what we are doing is let's say y is a x or b but in the sensitivity list we forget to put b we only have a now what will happen in this case hmm? will it create a xor gate or something else it will not create a xor gate okay it will create something different ideally a and b both should be in the sensitivity list so what will happen in this case so what will happen is here is a circuit that it will implement or not a circuit but essentially the behavior only so let's say if you put only a in the sensitivity list okay this process is sensitive to only a but there is a y which is updated to get the value of a x or b what happens in such a process so if only a is in the sensitivity list and you forgot to put b whenever there is a change in a this process is triggered this a x or b is calculated and y is updated okay and that remains as it is that value of y remains until there is a change in a again in the meanwhile if there is a change in b nothing happens no change in happens so only when there is a change in a is the value of y updated how do i visualize this let's say suppose there is a there is a this input a okay and input b but we are not using the latest input b i am drawing what the hardware might look like so there may be some memory element which is storing the value of b okay so this is going being stored and this is the output of that so let's say b old some old value of b is used it's xor and this is the output of y why is a not being stored because a is in the sensitive list whenever there is a change in a immediately this is triggered this being our process is triggered and y is updated but if there is any change in b that not necessarily will y change so what happens is whenever there is a change in a whenever there is a change in a so either a goes from low to high or a goes from high to low at that time that acts like a load instruction to this memory memory element so we have not yet seen sequential circuits in the class but we will see how to implement this actually in hardware this memory block but essentially that's what will happen right whenever there is a change in a this this value will be stored and kept only when there is a change in a and whatever value stored will be used okay so let's not worry about this until we see the sequential circuits in detail in a future lecture but essentially if you are making a combinational circuit some circuit where the output is a function of the inputs okay then make sure to have all these things in the sensitivity list when you are using a process for example if you are creating a mux with inputs a b select line s and output y what should be in the sensitivity list all of these things s a and b should all be in the sensitivity list and y is a signal that it affects okay. so be careful of putting all of your uh, inputs 
into the sensitivity list. So let's see an uh, example of this process. We have not seen enough examples, so we'll see some examples to see how we can use this process block effectively. <coughs> 